Right, so here we are ready to power up the M90Z. As you can tell, there's a really high gloss screen and you can probably tell I'm wearing a baseball cap. So I'm going to reach ahead here and just power it up. Now let me talk about some of the other uh, features on this particular uh, machine. So uh, similarly to the A70Z, the M90Z, oh, what's this? Wow, that's interesting. It's some sort of Intel uh, firmware thing. So I don't know if that's like a uh, network uh, boot ROM or something like that. But anyway, um, similar to the M70Z, the M90Z is really focused on um, you know enterprise customers, uh, small office, home office. Um, although the M90Z, because of the size and the increased cost, is a little bit more focused on enterprise customers, whereas the uh, M70Z is a little bit more kind of small office, home office. Um, now, another interesting thing uh, about this machine is that it uses the uh, Intel uh, Q57 um, chipset. So it supports something called uh, vPro, which I know virtually nothing about, but if you're an enterprise customer and you need hardware-based vPro support, uh, this system does in fact have it. Yeah, I wish I could talk more intelligently about it, but I'm pretty much uh, kind of a small office guy, consumer-focused guy. Enterprise products are not really my area of expertise, although I'm sure a helpful YouTube commenter will jump in there and tell me all about vPro. So as you can tell, it's uh, booting up here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and Click next. Um, one of the things that that really um, jumps out at me uh, right right from the get go is number one, uh, it has a big screen. Number two, the big screen is big and glossy. So that's one of the uh, kind of the interesting things that I'm not really a huge fan of. I don't really like uh, glossy screens. Um, I think that in a reflective environment, like I have overhead fluorescent lights here, the glossy screens can really, um, they, they just pick up everything. So I really, I'm a little bit iffy on that. I'll kind of have to see how it works out long term. And I'm a little bit surprised too, because typically in an enterprise environment or a business environment, um, matte screens are pretty much very typical. And you you only tend to see the super, super high gloss screens when it comes to um, you know consumer level stuff. So that, that'll be kind of interesting to see what I think of it long term. Uh, a few other uh, specs. Um, so a 23 inch widescreen as I explained. Um, a little bit surprisingly, it has two gigs of RAM. And I say that's a little bit surprising because um, the retail price of this unit, like the MSRP, is about $1299. And uh, although you can get it configured from Lenovo for a bit closer to $850, $900 in that range. And it's pretty unusual for a computer in the kind of you know $900, $800 range to only have two gigs of RAM. Most of them at that price point will have four gigs, if not six six and sometimes even eight. Now, again, this is a bit more kind of in the consumer space, but I am a little bit surprised that uh, it only has two gigs of RAM. The good news is that the RAM can be upgraded. Uh, the sort of bad news is that Lenovo used uh, Windows 7 Professional 32-bit on this particular system. And 32-bit means, of course, that uh, even if you were to put four gigs of RAM in here, you'd be limited to usually about between three and 3.5 gigs of RAM. So you would never actually get the full four gigs of RAM. You need to have a 32, or sorry, 64-bit operating system uh, for that. Now, it uses, um, the Intel GMA HD uh, graphics processor. So that's, of course, uh, integrated graphics. It's part of the uh, Q57 um, chipset. So again, you're not really going to be using this for games, but you wouldn't you wouldn't buy an enterprise class all-in-one computer uh, for games. Let's face it; it'll be able to play some of the simple stuff, but uh, you're not going to buy it for gaming. Uh, now, a couple of other things. Um, it um, it has an integrated microphone and speakers. So um, up here near the uh, near the top where the webcam is, there's actually uh, a microphone array. So there's actually dual microphones. It, it, it features noise canceling and all that other stuff, which is pretty cool. Um, another thing of note is that the two megapixel webcam uh, supports um, 720p um, video resolution. Now I'm a little bit unclear on whether or not that supports it across the board uh, because I, I heard some slightly conflicting information about the resolution on the camera, but it is it is effectively there. Uh, I'm just going to click through here. It's offering me uh, a few different things. I don't really care about Microsoft Office, so I'm going to say no. Um, I do like the fact that um, up here, it's, it's, it's actually offering me uh, Norton Internet Protection, and it's giving me an option to say protect my PC or don't protect my PC. I'm going to say don't protect my PC. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. And uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to click on finish. 
Um, I'm going to continue before closing setup. So now it's going ahead and it's doing the um, automatic uh, setup for me. Uh, now, also worth noting, uh, on the M90Z, it actually comes with a three-year warranty standard rather than the one-year warranty that was on the, uh, the A70Z. So it does, of course, have a better warranty. Um, other things worth noting, um, it has integrated Wi-Fi. It does not have integrated um, Bluetooth. And... Um, the spec sheet here says that as a serial port, but I didn't actually see that on the back, so I'm, I, I don't think that that's actually um, accurate. Now, here's something that I've been kind of saving for a moment. You'll notice on the desktop background there, it actually shows you um, it actually shows you uh, a finger. Well, here's why. This is actually a touch screen. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to tap down here, and voila. So the touch screen functions quite nicely. Now here's what's really interesting. I'm not an expert on touch screen technology, but what's kind of intriguing about this is that this is neither uh, this is neither capacitive nor uh, resistive touch. There's, there's actually um, uh, cameras integrated inside the chassis, infrared camera, that uh, when, uh, when my finger you know breaks the, um, the camera beam, is it going to let me expand that here? Uh, when my finger breaks the infrared beam, it actually um, allows, it, it registers the touch. So what that means is that I can actually use this touch screen uh, with um, gloves on, for instance, which in some, you know, some enterprise environments, uh, being able to use it with a glove might actually be a, an interesting feature. There's also this thing up here, it's called Simple Tap, and I'm not... Um, so this is the first time I've, I've ever actually used this, but this is obviously a bit of an overview that talks about um, how to use uh, Simple Tap. And so we'll just go ahead and kind of click OK. OK, so that's, that's pretty cool. It actually allows you to, you know, um, configure some of the basics. Uh, this is allowing me to configure the volume. This, uh, of course, would mute the volume. This uh, kills the microphone. Um, oh. Isn't that weird? I don't know why it just sort of split apart there, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, <laughs> gonna unmute the microphone. There we go. Uh, camera control, locking the computer, and then this would probably uh, put it to sleep. So that is uh, that simple tap. So that's that's actually pretty interesting. It gives you some uh, neat kind of way to control the machine. Again, though, one of the things I always want to stress whenever I'm talking about um, touch and Windows 7 is that there are some things about Windows that are um, appropriate for touch, like down here in kind of the uh, the bottom area uh, where you're starting up apps. That that's quite appropriate for touch. But uh, there's certain other elements, like when you're trying to click on the X and other other UI elements of Windows 7 that are not really that well suited to touch. So it'll be interesting to see whether or not this is sort of a a good touch experience um, or whether it's not such a good touch experience. Because of course I ding the H HP uh, TM2 for not having a great touch experience because uh, Windows 7 just is not really designed around a touch interface. So that has been my first look and first impressions of the Lenovo uh, Think Center M90Z. This has been Jason Dunn from Digital Home Thoughts. I hope you have uh, enjoyed this unboxing and first impressions. Watch for my follow-up review where uh, I'll be posting that in maybe a few weeks to a month or so once I uh, take this thing for a spin and I'll let you know what I think of it. So thanks a lot for watching. If you have any questions, please post them. Uh, subscribe to my channel and uh, please rate this video a thumbs up. Thanks a lot for watching.